Thanks, Matthias, and um, I will also try to do it 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> so I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm just trying now to, to keep it short because there's so much to talk about this. I mean, how to shape the future of TV with operator tier. Such a big topic. Um, I think everybody who is in this room um, is driven um, by the fact that you want to shape somehow the future of TV. Uh, the way we consume video content um, on any device. And um, I would like to put this into perspective um, in 10 minutes. Um, what you can now do um, using Google Android TV and what we have been doing as a company already in the last 10 years, uh, probably unknown or hidden, um, because after talking with many people here, uh, basically they have been unknown to us. So, um, First of all, I would like to um, start a little bit um, with what, is, what are we doing? Who is 3SS? Um, so we have been always focusing on providing the best user experience um, on all front ends, so on all devices, no matter if it's a smart TV, it's a game console, it's a mobile device, a wearable, a Google Glass, a HoloLens, or set of boxes. And um, our core competence today is that we are just being able to deliver the experience that the customers want. And our customers are, of course, operators, broadcasters, but our shared customers are the end consumers. And um, we have been so successful because um, customers who have been, I would say, locked in into products or have been restricted by products came to us and said, can you help us to create uh, the experience that we always wanted? Can you give us this flexibility? And uh, we have been focusing on this and have been growing rapidly to our now 200 people. Um, we had been um, involved in 300 video projects that we delivered successfully. And today, um, we are not doing only custom projects, um, but we also have a product, and we are able to launch on Android set -up boxes and all multi-screen devices much faster uh, than ever before. Um, to, to come back and focus on Android TV as a platform. So here we have gained uh, most of our experience with Swisscom. Swisscom has been, for us as a company, an amazing partner um, because they have been on Media Room um, back in the day. I think uh, Ingmar was also explaining the journey um, in another session earlier today. And um, there we have been able to, to rock on the platform to learn everything about Android TV and, of course, from Switzerland, all about quality and stability on those boxes. Um, and we have launched with Swisscom in 2016 um, already an Ultra HD version based on Android AOSP. And uh, basically with Canal Digital last year, we have launched uh, an operator tier version, uh, one place, which is using a standard launcher. And also last year we have launched with Comham, based on our own product now, an operator tier custom launcher version. Um, and uh, those are the different hybrid models that we have been launching. So Syscom is pure IPTV. Um, Canal Digital was, um, or is, hybrid DVBS, OTT, and for Comham we have basically DVBC, T, IPTV, and OTT in one box. And um, um, I'm showing you these three things because um, there are currently so many Android TV projects and there will be a lot of more launching. We're also working on very cool projects at the moment that we'd like to share soon with you. Um, but we, we think that we are one of these ecosystem partners which are really able to work on all these platforms and work in all Android flavors to deliver the way you want it. Yeah? So if you go standard launcher like United Cloud, we can support you with this. If you go um, more custom with a custom launcher, then we can support you as well. Um, these are just one more time the different models. So what is the future of TV? I think uh, there were now two days, conferences, sessions, discussions. So everyone has his own idea about the future of TV. Um, from a 3SS perspective, we believe from a user's perspective, the future of TV has to be um, essentially built of two things. One is it has to be extremely simple, yeah? and we see that already that today it's not simple, otherwise we are, we are not busy all day trying to make it simple. Yeah? And the other thing is it has to be much more personal. So everything that makes TV in the future successful is because it's much more personal to the user. And um, in order to achieve simplicity, 
you have to centralize access for the user to aggregate all content, apps and games on one platform and not this fragmentation that is happening today. So we need to have, even though there are many brands, there are many content owners, there are many providers, the user don't care. He just wants to sit there and watch. Yeah? So somebody has to do the job in bringing all this complexity in one place um, and centralize this access. And on top, and that's what operators also need to focus on is the user experience that you have on a TV or on a box must be consistent with the experience on web, mobile, or any other device because in the end it creates this deja vu effect that we are having when we're using something first time and actually it, it feels like you have used it before. And it only is if it's consistent across all devices and apps that you're using. So that's why I want to show you also how flexible Android TV has become so you're able to, to create this experience across all devices. Yeah. Um, and of course, I mean, you know that linear TV and on demand, it has to be merged together. It has to be, become one thing for the user to, to navigate, to, to explore, and to watch. And we still believe you know, live sports and live events will be still out there for many, many years. Um, but content that is available on demand, um, the user is not tied anymore to any schedule. Yeah. So we have to enable this um, to the user. And when we talk about uh, personalization for the future of TV, um, the home screen is in any kind of application. It's like the entrance of your shop. It's, it's the entrance of the library that you go in. And if you go in first time, of course, you cannot expect that somebody knows you and your interest. But if you come back more often, uh, you expect that they are not the same books again <laughs> that you have been reading already, or actually the guy at the reception already knows you and says, hey, I have something new cool for you. So um, this is very important. The home screen is where people end up. And here's something I have still not understood why it's not changed yet. Today, if we start a TV or a set or box, it usually tunes the last watched live channel, right? And the question is why? How high is the chance that the last watched live channel is something relevant for the user? He turns off the box in a completely separate time. You know, it, it's, it's actually quite unlikely that it's relevant for the user. Yeah. So basically what you have to do is that when he enters into experience that you show him something relevant and maybe you show him his personal channel or you just show the home screen which probably has more relevant content for him. Um, the power of voice is part of the future of TV, of course. Google Assistant allows you a lot to achieve that, especially if you have not the time, the money, and the resources to create your own voice experience. Um, and if you have centralized all apps, games, content, linear, live, recordings, PVR, everything, I mean, in the end, you can display everything in tiles, but it will be in the future the voice that still makes, makes you discover all this. And uh, there we really believe that Google Assistant is, is doing the right technologies and open up the right uh, ways for operators so you can push still your content that you license. Um, but for the user, he finds the content that he watches and he pay, uh, the content that he paid for first. But then he has basically the opportunity to find everything else also. Personal linear channels I will not dive into today, but I think it's also part of the future. Yeah? Um, I mean, linear channels, come on. Today, what is it? It's, a, it's an expert curation yeah. for a large target group. Yeah. But in the future, there are many more channels for much more niche groups. Yeah. And those are recommendation driven, but there must be also curators that create those. So it will be always a mix in the future. Um, that's part of future of TV. And of course, advertising, if you have personal channels, you want also advertising that's more relevant to you, right? And um, that's how we see the future of TV um, from a user's perspective. So now jumping back, um, what does Android provide? So Android TV in the custom launcher version allows the operator to basically, when the user first set up the box, to define all the apps that should be mandatory installed or just recommended to the user. Yeah. So you as an operator have full control what apps are basically directly on the box. And you can really think about, um, okay, in my region, I want the music apps, I want the sports apps, I want games, and you make this specific to your customers. 
Um, when you talk about Operator Tier Custom Launcher, this is now uh, our product UI with a sidebar navigation. But basically, you have full ownership of the UI on UX, so you can also uh, create a top bar navigation and do it consistently across all of your apps. Um, <clears throat> and if you now look uh, how we place the Google Play Store access, it's one of the key requirements, of course. Um, here we put it under apps because we want to, we can't, that the user finds it, right? We don't, don't want to hide it. It's, it's value, so you have to show it to the user. Google is very open here, so you're even able to, to put the App Store somewhere down in the home screen. It would be still compliant. But we want to actually make sure the user finds the, the things and the, get access to all of the apps. Um, there are system notifications now that allow you to better understand uh, when your battery is low and things like this. Uh, so it allows you, uh, like what you said, Laden, um, that actually the OAM integration and the hardware um, is much more standardized. And you, as an operator, you can just focus on the TV app experience and not the integration and the system-specific stuff. Um, what is also a rumor, I think, is that if you have Google Assistant, you give away all search. Um, you can still build your own UI search inside your launcher, which only shows your result. But of course, if you trigger the Google Assistant on your remote, it will, it will be through the system. And you also have to have uh, access to the device settings, but I mean, that's clear. Some, they want to tweak settings, they want to uh, maybe play with their Google account, adjust their Chromecast name that they're casting to, to TV, things like this. And you don't want to handle this in the future. Yeah? Google is handling for you. So when we scroll more down, um, if you are still having your own experience, you have the possibility to place any partner apps and content wherever you want. Um, we, we can even do that with a remote control tool um, that we are offering. And, but what is even more important than just apps is actually that you can still do, um, take the content recommendations from inside the apps that are installed on the box and show them inside your own experience and put them closer to the user. So you can build, let's say, you, you take five sports apps, you build a sports section, and you fill it with apps, <coughs> content recommendations from those apps. So you as an operator, you, you, even if you don't license any sports content, the user will find all sports relevant things there, and the recommendations are still done by the app and the service provider itself. So this is one requirement when you go inside the app section. It's also a rumor um, that the, the sort and order is all controlled by Google. Basically, what you have to comply to is that there is an out-of-the-box ordering that you have to do, and after the user starts to download and use apps, those are all ordered by recency most of the time, or by alphabet, um, or by other rules. But it's not controlled by Google at all. Um, this is just an example of uh, capability to bring in uh, seamlessly linear content with on-demand and apps just configured with things that are available in the ecosystem. And um, I want to quickly also highlight a little bit um, when you search. So even if you use the Google Assistant, um, and in this case I was searching for action movies, um, if you have content relevant for action movies and something comes back from your search, the Google Assistant will prioritize it. And here is just an example of action movies that are shown here. Uh, you even have your content uh, also branded, so it's clear that it's from you, it's from your brand, it's from the operator. Um, and this first result screen is still owned by you. If the user now decides, hey, I want to see if other apps that I've installed in the box have something relevant, then I go to all results, and then I see what's available at YouTube, at Netflix, at Amazon, and all the other platforms. But I think, uh, Jackie, you will explain this much more in detail. Hmm? Um, so I'm coming to the end of my presentation also over time. Yeah? <laughs> but um, I think from, from our perspective, we have been always dreaming of creating the best possible user experience. And Android TV finally allows us from, from a front-end development perspective to really achieve that, bringing all those things together. Um, and we believe the future of TV, uh, we have to create it. It will not come to us. And with this, I want to close my presentation and say thank you.